Myra, New York. Mrs. Shapiro is 86 years old, having been born on March 21st, 1916. So that makes me on Friday. Well, almost, be, yes, almost 87. 87 yeah. <laughs> My name is Maureen Reynolds, and I'll be the interviewer today. Rita, could you state for the recording what war and branch of service you served in? Yes, I, the war was WW2, okay. and I went in as one of the original WACs. But throughout the years, the status was changed. The WACs were no longer on auxiliary, and therefore they went into the branch of service that they were serving at the time. So I was uh, in the Air Force. Great, great. And what was the highest rank you ever achieved? Captain. Okay. And what was your rank when you started out? You said that the WACs started out. I went out. directly from, oh, I went from home to OCS. Okay. And then I was what they called a third officer. See, we okay. were still auxiliary. And what he's called third officer, which is tenth, second, uh, the, the same thing as a uh, uh, second lieutenant. Okay. Correct. And then I rose from that to, to first lieutenant and then eventually captain. That's great. Before, just before, it was not just before, but um, then I was discharged after that. So you weren't a captain? I was captain there for, for uh, about, oh, six, eight months, something like that, I think, as right. I recall. Yep. Okay. A lot of this is memory. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have to rely right. on, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and where did you mostly serve? I was originally, I was sent from OCS, I was sent to Miami, Florida. And then I was sent to Orlando, which is where I stayed for the rest of my service. And when did you um, first enter the service? In uh, the October of 1942. Okay. I went to OCS. Okay. I went to in Fort Des Moines, Iowa, and came out and uh, and uh, that's where they assigned me first. And then the reason they sent me to Orlando was because I had to make way for 400 troops. I had to take care of absolutely everything except their food, and that's what uh, that's what my job was in the beginning. And then I went on, did, did you want this? <laughs> I wanted to know the rest oh, of it. Oh, please, please. And then continue. I went on to be the, um, um, I was in the, um, I did, oh dear, my, I'm, my mind is getting bad. Um, I was in the um, service in the, um, originally as supply. And I took care of all the supplies that all the girls need from clothing right straight down to a desk to an alarm clock for the cooks and things like that. Okay. And uh, so then I, after that I was taken to be um, a member of the uh, um, of the um, general staff. I was on, put on the general staff also in supply. It was called A4 and um, I stayed there until until I was discharged. And when were you discharged? I was discharged in December of 45. Okay. And, I, yes, and mm -hmm. uh, came back to, of course, the civilian life and so on. <laughs> Enjoyed all my years in the service. It was, uh, even though I went in a little bit older than with a lot of the women, I, um, I found that it was a, a broadening experience. And um, it was, I hate to use the word maturing, but in a, in a way it was, even though I was older. How was it? How was it a maturing? Well, because I, I accepted responsibility. Uh, I um, knew that I had to do things on time, not my way, but there was another way to do it. Uh, I just feel that my association with so many different people that I would never have met uh, under any circumstances was so great, and and talking to them and hearing their philosophy of life and and their aims and so forth it. It caused. It was a good give and take, you know, sort of thing, and it was um, it was very rewarding for me. That's great. Now you mentioned you were older than a lot of the girls. Yes. What was the average age of the women that you were with? That I was with. Um, the officers were all a little bit older, even though I was older than some of the others who went to uh, OCS. But um, I think most of them were in there. The women, the the. the uh, wax themselves were in the 20 range, uh, early 20. Mm -hmm. So what made you decide to, to join the well, wax? Well, there were several this. things I don't mind this at all. First of all, I thought World War II was a just war. There was a reason for it. And um, even though we didn't get into it late until late, 
uh, I felt that uh, it was a good thing to do, not like today. And <laughs> I had to get that in. Perfectly fine. And um, I, I just, uh, also, I was the first generation American. My father had done well, and uh, we were, you know, middle class. And um, I, I felt that that was important. And um, there were no boys in our family. And I felt that I had to represent the family. And um, so that, that, and I felt that it was, um, it was the right thing to do at that time. I had no ties. So it was right for me. Now you said you were a first generation American. Where were your parents? My parents were both from Poland, Warsaw, Poland. And they came over, my father, they both came over very young. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were engaged when, when my father came over and then my mother followed afterwards and then they were married. Oh, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. And I had a sister and she has subsequently died, but mm -hmm. uh, there were just the two girls, and that, therefore I felt that it was my place to do something. Did your sister do anything with the war? No, or? she did not. She, had, she was married, had a family, and she was bringing them up, and she was very active in the community. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she did her way, her those things, you know, as she saw fit, as they came up, I would imagine. Yeah. Did. I know it's, it must have been hard to kind of know what to expect when you went there, but did you, were you shocked by anything that you experienced, or did it meet your expectations? No, it didn't. It, as a matter of fact, I went in totally expecting to do whatever was, well, what I was called upon to do. And as far as my expectations, uh, I really didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. I just felt that it was, you know, that it would be... It was, an, it, it was also, uh, I think, because it was an experience for me, and it was something that I wanted to do, that's all. Now, did you ever hope, did you always want to stay sit stateside, or did you ever have a chance to go? Yes. Uh, I was sent to Commander General Staff School, which is usually, a, a people who go there usually go overseas, and pre it's a preparation, it's a three-month course in Fort Leavenworth. And um, uh, I was supposed to have gone overseas as soon as I was through. My trunks were packed. My trunk was packed. And uh, now to re go back a little bit. Uh, I was dating our chaplain, our ra rabbi. And through him, I met the head chaplain. And the three of us did a lot of things together. We, was, we were all good, real good friends. When he had just come back from the Pacific Theater, and when he heard that I was going overseas, he went to the commanding general and asked to have my, my orders rescinded. He did not want me to go. He said he had seen too many things that were bad physically mm -hmm. for, for the women. I mean, they got, they got these diseases and their hair fell out. and I don't know. This is just hearsay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never followed through and I never really found out about it. But he saw, he felt that the, the, these girls were, um, who were over in the Pacific Theater were subjected to more things than people really knew about. And, and it wasn't that they were, their lives were endangered so much as what, uh, what they were subjected to, the fear possibly and, and, and the diseases and so on like that. So I didn't go overseas. I was, had to be content to stay. I was very angry. <laughs> But, um, I wondered. <laughs> yeah, I was very angry, but then, I mean in a nice way, because mm -hmm. I could never be really angry with him. But, so you um, forgave him eventually. Yes, I did forgive him eventually, but he had to atone for it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that that was the uh, um, that was what how I happened to stay there, you know, throughout the time, and then um, I, when I was ready to um, to be detached. Um, and go home. Uh, I was offered if I would stay. They said they would give me my uh, my uh, look look. What is it? Um, well, anyway, I'll think of it. Anyway, they they uh, they promised me a, a promotion, mm -hmm. and uh, I said no. I was going out. It might set my time. I had I had done what I had wanted to accomplish, and there was no need for me anymore. Originally, also they kept saying that that. Um, uh, we were to go in and make room for another man to, to go overseas, which was a good theory, but it weighed on my mind terribly 
because I kept saying to myself, "Am I sent? Did I send this man to his death?" I mean, I, I, it worried me terribly if I was, you know, I don't know how many men I was, I replaced, but it um, it bothered me for a long time. That I, I, I'm glad I didn't know who these people were, but it was always in the back of my mind. I wonder if they came home. And that was a familiar phrase that a lot of the women heard. Was yes, they, they were. Oh, that was, the yes, men? that was that was the original cry, the original reason, you know, for for women to join to to make room, send women overseas, and the war would be over faster. That was their theory. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hmm. um, what was your life like before you went to war? I was a um, a school teacher. Okay. Active in the community. Was a camp counselor for many years. Um, I, um, you know, that was that was my my life, and I had, of course, a lot of friends. But as I repeat, I, I was active in the community as, mm -hmm. as I could be, and um, so that was um, that was my life. You know, it was. What grade I, did you teach? I taught junior and senior high school, mostly senior high school in, in English and history. Mm -hmm. So then you went on to become part of history. Yes, right. <laughs> That's right. So then, you mentioned when you were discharged in 1945 yes. that you went back to civilian life. Right. Was that a hard adjustment for you? Well, my, my situation was different. My father, we found out shortly after I got out. Incidentally, I came home and uh, uh, <laughs> hadn't thought about this in a while. I, a friend of mine who had gone to OCS, to um, command school with me, and I decided we'd go skiing. So we went up to the Chateau Frontenac and, and uh, in um, Canada, and I broke my ankle skiing. So oh my, my leg, I was in a cast, and I, I was going around trying to find jobs, and I was very, very upset because they wouldn't take my application. I was a woman, they had to save the jobs for the men. And not the fact that I had served in the service, you know, the same as the men, they wouldn't even look at my resume. They wouldn't even consider it. So it was a, a question of my having to go on. However, my father got became very ill and had cancer and died within a short time. In the meantime, I became reacquainted with a man that I had known when I was very young and we had remained friends throughout the years and I started seeing him again and we were married. So I went from the wax to my father's death to marriage, all within a very short time. Oh, wow. Yes. And then, after all of that, were you able to finally get back into the working world, or did you stay home? No, I stayed home for a while. My husband, my husband and I were in a business, and I went into the business with him mm -hmm. um, later on, after our kids were grown. What kind of business? We had the women's wear. We had a small chain of, of women's wear stores, sports. Uh, Sports wear and so forth, yeah. And I did some of the buying and, and um, when I had to go into New York to do the buying and so forth. And how many children did you have? Two. Two. I have a girl, mm -hmm. a daughter, Julie, who is a painter, an artist, lives in, in uh, Medford, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, she has a son whose name is Jason. He lives in California and he is a writer. My son, Jerry was with us in the business for a time, and then he was killed by a drunken driver. Oh what? When you were down, when you were stationed in Orlando and then yes. Miami, I imagine you had some free time. Yes. What did what did the ladies do, or some of the gentlemen that were with you too? What did you do to pass the time? Oh, we had lots to do. We were, I went to museums. It was you know as much as I could, and also um, we just um, we played a lot. We swam and we played, and um, we just um, uh, I don't know what else. I kept my of course I read a lot, which and um, I can't I can't begin to tell you what we did. <laughs> we were just. We just went, you know, if we a few people were free. And, you know, we'd go together and go to, go to Miami Beach or travel around some, we'd have a car. But I was only there for a very short time. Mm -hmm. But when I was in Orlando, there was dating 
<laughs> and there were uh, there were a lot of activities, you know, that I took part in. We could go into Orlando as much as we wanted to, and you know, on our time off. And um, uh, sometimes we took trips if we had the time. And uh, it was. Um, we didn't have that much time, I must say mm -hmm. that. We really didn't have that much time. But um, we managed well, and we, we did, you know, we did what we could that we wanted to. Mm -hmm. How did you predominantly travel when you said you would go on trips occasionally? By car or by train? Yes, and or? by car. Um, and if I, of course, when I went home, it would be by, by train. Um, so, sometimes when I was sent to a, um, a, a school, I was sent to quite a few schools, um, I, they flew me. I was flown. I, I know I flew uh, up to the place where it was going to be. But as far as the activities are concerned, um, one of my dear friends, a couple of my dear friends, had cars, mm -hmm. and, um, and they and we used to go. To, she was from Tampa. My best friend was from Tampa, and so we used to go and visit her her home. And then we visited. Um, they had a, a cottage or a big home on the bay, and Tampa Bay, and so we used to go there and spend. A weekend just resting up and doing the things we wanted to do. <laughs> just relaxing. Just relaxing. Mm -hmm. Now, have, were you able to stay in touch with her after you were discharged? I did for a while, and then I lost track of her. She was um, she was a very interesting woman. She was um, Irish and and Spanish royalty mixed, and she had the high the red hair and the mm -hmm. high cheekbones, and she was she was beauty. She was also very very bright. She was the head WAC officer in um, in Orlando. She was the a captain of the of the I mean the, not captain the the head of the uh, um, all the women that were there. How many women were there with you? Well, I think it finally grew. When I went there first, I was the only one. Mm -hmm. um, then I I made way for the four hundred troops. And then it grew up. It grew. I wouldn't be surprised if there at one time were about near a thousand. Wow. Six, six, six hundred, seven hundred. I, I can't. I really don't know. That's something I'm going to have to look up. That's great. Was there anyone else from? Were you living in Elmira at the time that you joined up? Oh no, I was living. My home was Binghamton. Binghamton. I went out of Binghamton, and only came here as that when I married. Oh. Yes. Was there was there anyone else from the Binghamton area? Any other women that went with you? Yes, did not with me. Not at my time. I was the first one who went, and from Binghamton area, as an officer, and um, so I just um, I didn't know very many you know people. But the ones we were in OCS, I had I had dozens of friends. You know, they were all great women. I thought. Yeah. So you mentioned that you stayed in touch with your friend from Tampa yes. for a while. Was there anyone else you were able to stay in touch with? No, I have not. For a short time, I kept in touch with a few people. But then they went their way and I went my way. But I had a very interesting experience uh, just recently. A, um, oh, spelled something on that. Um, a, um, my, one of my, my sergeant, uh, when I was in, in um, the company doing supply, mm -hmm. Uh, was a, a wonderful girl, and she came from Salt Lake City. And uh, I decided that I was going to see if I could find her. And just last Christmas, I found her. Oh, and she goodness. still lives in Salt Lake City. And we've talked on the phone two or three times, and we're going to be, you know, we're keeping in touch now. So it's really very exciting that I saw her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got her, and uh, I would love to see her, but um, I'm not so sure. That we'll How be did able you to find her? She was a computer, <laughs> naturally, and we went to a woman who was doing how my my daughter's significant other was with us, and he was he's real crackerjack on the computer as he's doing. <laughs> and uh, we found one woman who was doing work with uh, um, getting people, uh, uh, finding people you know who are in the service and so forth. So we contacted her. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, she lived. We found she, she had somebody who lived in Salt Lake City. She got a hold of them, and then they, I, I, I could only give her her maiden name, mm -hmm. and so we through that we were able to find her. And so I called her right away. Yeah, oh, and it was funny. great. Yeah, oh, it was great to sit down with her. Yeah, mm -hmm. but all the rest of my friends um, 
Who I th I think most of them have predeceased. Yeah, I I think they're all most of them are gone. As far as I I've been able to figure out. Now you mentioned that this woman from Salt Lake City was a sergeant. Were um, a lot of your higher ranking, or a lot of the higher ranking officials, were a lot of them women? Were you all sent to replace the men, or were did you have some commanding officers that were men as well? Well, no. The, all right, in the company, in the okay. white company, it was run by a woman, a okay. white. Or I just told you the, from a the, woman, the woman from Tampa. Thayla, Thayla Stina is her name, Ooh, and um, she was the head of all the whites. However, I went out of her jurisdiction when I was taken over to the um, to the the um, general's staff. Yes. So yes. I was no longer affiliated with her. I was affiliated with the Air Force, mm -hmm. totally with the Air Force. And uh, that happened to a lot of the women. However, our barracks were the same. I mean, we lived with the other girls mm -hmm. and other women. And uh, we retained all the friendships, you know. Well, so, yeah. What was barrack life like? Hectic. <laughs> it was hectic, but um, we had two long um, barracks with in the middle was the was the washroom and the johns, mm -hmm. you know, the showers and everything else. And we would go back and forth, you know, between the both sides. Um, they were always yelling, "Who has, you know, who's in the shower? Wondering, can I get the shower? Please get out of the shower. Um, I have to wash some <laughs> clothes. I'll give you, you know." It was just, it was just fun, though. You know, we just had a good time at it. There was never, and everybody was going her own way. Mm -hmm. And um, and some of them were transferred out. Some of them stayed. Mm -hmm. And um, and um, uh, it w it was fun. It was like a dormitory, Com comparable to a dormitory in college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Now, did did you ever go to college? Did you have any college? Yes, I was. A, I, I was a, a, a. You mean since I I, I, um, I got either my, before or after the war. when I went to. Uh, after I graduated from high school, I, I graduated from Syracuse University as a teacher, okay. and then, then then that was it. And the only schooling that I had after that related to the army mm -hmm. and things that I was doing. Did the training that the army gave you did the, did that help with your later life? Oh yes, with, with the business with your husband. Yes, um, it, it it really did. It, as a matter of fact, I changed some of his office work, office <laughs> <laughs> things around because. Of, you know how the army is, you do everything in triplicate and then throw it away. But um, <laughs> it was, um, I, I, you know, got my husband to do some of the things that worked mm -hmm. for me in the army. So that, that did yes. And uh, also, I had, I was easier meeting people, it was easier for me meeting people. I was sort of shy when I went in. And um, even at that age, yeah. But um, it was, um, as far as my work and everything, I feel that the Army did give me good training mm -hmm. that I get carried through. And um, and also, all the women tell me that I'm the only one they know at my age who is a, as erect as I am, who walks straight <laughs> with her shoulders back. I assume that that's a combination of the service and my mother, who used to always say, <laughs> stand up straight, stand up straight. <laughs> So anyway, so but we did have to stand up straight, you know, when mm -hmm. we were in, you know, and service and marching and so forth. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, and forgive me, I should have asked you right. sooner. How old were you when you went in? Twenty-six. You were twenty-six. Yes. Got out a little before I was thirty, and was married at, at thirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So all this experience. All this, in, you know, in a short time. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned when you were in the service down in Florida. Yes. That you went on trips, but that you did you mention you were also able to travel home occasionally? Oh, yes, I got leave. I think we were allowed to leave twice a year, and we could take weeks and a week. And also, um, my mother came down to see me, mm -hmm. and I rented a car while she was there. And my sister and her two children came to visit me, and I got them a, a place. And, and um, so we would we traveled around. I got a car, and we could I fortunately could take some time off. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we we traveled around to see, you know, for them to see what was going on there. So the your area. your father never made it down to see you. No, or? he never did. Yeah. What about your family? How did they feel? You said that you felt it was your duty to join, mm -hmm. and because your sister was already married and had a family, mm -hmm. what did your parents think? My of parents you were very 
upset in the beginning. They were very much against it, and I prevailed. <laughs> and um, but uh, they were they they didn't know what I was getting into. You know, they were scared about it. But um, I think after I came home from my first on my first leave and I was in uniform, they liked showing me off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and how long until you had that first leave? Well, it was early. I had a first leave around the first of the year. I, I had gone, yeah, around the first of the year. I had uh, my first leave, and I was still in in, my, in Miami at the time. Okay. Because my parents could not understand. There were so many soldiers around, and why wasn't I home? And they they couldn't understand. They couldn't get really. And I guess people have to be in the army to understand the army. Uh, but um, I I just. It's time. My time was not my own, mm -hmm. and the point was that I had to wait until I could had time accumulated before I could leave and go up north uh, to see them. But I did have um, I it went up. I would say three or four times during the times that I was there. And then your family came down to visit. And then my mother did, yeah. And then my sister separately, yes. And they came down to see me, and uh, we had a good time. Yeah. Were, did you write a lot of letters back and forth? Oh Were yes, you able that to was our only contact? that was our only means of conversation. I would call, you know, on occasion, mm -hmm. but uh, letter and nobody saved my letters. I had a friend who um, who saved my letters for a while, um, and then didn't have room for them, mm -hmm. and because she felt that she couldn't understand why I was writing in two or three different handwritings. Because it was what I'd write and then stop, and then I pick up again, and my handwriting was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But um, they saved my letters because they felt that it was a bit of history, and then they somehow had to get rid of them. I wish I had taken them. Now, yeah, were most of your letters written like that, kind of in segments? I didn't always have time. Yeah, I would do some in my office mm -hmm. if I if I wasn't busy at the typewriter, and. Um, and then I'd have to just go away. I mean, something came up would come up invariably. If I had ten minutes at a time, it was a lot. So I would. And when I got home at night, I was tired, and I wanted to do reading, and the lighting wasn't so good, and you know that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. I did most of my writing by, and my handwriting was awful. <laughs> so they all appreciate the fact that I type in most instances. <laughs> Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, now we've touched on a lot of things. Is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you're interested in sharing, or any feelings or stories? I just oh yeah, there are lots. Yeah, no, I'm reading my memoirs. I don't know whether I told you that. No, or you didn't tell me. At the insistence of my children. Well, good and, for them. <laughs> uh, and so I, a lot of these things are in my mind, but a lot of them are personal, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure that I want to, you know. Um, share, them. share, yeah. But um, I did have a good. I, I get, did do well in the service. I just um, here's an interesting one. I had written a, a big, a long paper. I was doing s supply, and I was also doing stock control. We had a lot of satellite stations mm -hmm. throughout Florida, and I would have to go and see how their stock control was and that sort of thing. And I had to write a big record, and uh, of what they all had. And uh, it was to go to the um, Pentagon, mm -hmm. and um, I uh, got the thing ready. And my boss was wonderful. He said, "I will send you up in a plane as long as they insist that you're doing this. I'll send you up in one of our planes, and you can take you know, the plane will wait for you in Washington, and then it'll take you home to Binghamton, and then pick you up and bring you back down," which was wonderful. And um, everybody was all excited about it. I had my little suitcase with just <laughs> enough for a weekend. I got and uh, I took my report to the man to whom it was supposed to go, and I saluted and said, "This is it." And I turned around. He said, and "To go back out." He said, "Where are you going?" I said, "I'm going up." You know, I explained that I was going up to home, going home. And he says, "You're not going anyplace." I was there for a month. In the month of June, and if anybody knows anything about about Washington, it is the world's worst month uh, and heat, and you know it was just dreadful. But and the awful part of it was that during the war there were no rooms, and I had to live 
almost day to day, they would tell me whether I could stay on at this hotel. From, almost from day to day, and I was there for a month. So it was pretty awful. I had no clothes. I had to go out and buy clothes. And, um, but it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, in, in a lot of ways. Um, I got to see the Pentagon. I saw, got to see how the inner workings, you know, of the Army. Uh, or of the Air Force. Um, I had um, some good experiences. Uh, I saw Ike and Mamie come home when they were, he came home and he was presented with, a, he and his wife were presented with a, a tea service, I think, for, you know, that's appreciation. And I happened to be able to look down and see them in the opening part of the Pentagon. And um, it was uh, very exciting and I did meet a lot of marvelous people, exciting people. But I also had to do this report, and they assigned two, I know I was the first lieutenant, so I, I know that I outranked them, um, for which I was grateful afterwards. <laughs> and uh, they knew absolutely nothing about supply or what the planes needed or anything else. And they'd go down the list, why do you need this many? Go down the list, why do you need this? And they, I really had so many big arguments with them. And it, um, but then afterwards everything would be forgotten. We go out to dinner, <laughs> and so uh, I mean, but it was it was just a harrowing experience because these men did not know what they were talking about, and here I was. But anyway, I got to see Washington, mm -hmm. which was wonderful, and people were very, very nice. You know, people in uniform. Of course, I wasn't alone. I mean, there were thousands and thousands of us there. <laughs> But um, people were generally nice, uh, and uh, but uh, I will never forget that experience of just coming up with a little suitcase and staying for a month. Mm -hmm. Men who <laughs> who came to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> now, is the reason that they kept you in Washington for a month was it to teach other people about no, supply? No, no, it was Why just to go over the just to go over before they this report, my report, until they published it. So they wanted to be able to get all the kinks out, things that they thought, you know. But they assigned people to me who just were just not knowledgeable. Nice. They were very nice. Mm -hmm. But they were just not knowledgeable. And so I had a big struggle. And then to go back to that room and not know whether I had <laughs> I had it for another week or so. Mm -hmm. And um, But I made the most of, of the, my time there, my free time. I went around and I just, uh, you know, sight, did a lot of sightseeing and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then some friends of mine came up, oh, came down, and <laughs> we spent the weekends, you know, the few weekends that I had off. And we'd, uh, you know, just visit and, and uh, I mean, just sightsee and so forth, mm -hmm. which was very exciting for me. And it was great when I had my children, I could take them back down and say, I was <laughs> here, <laughs> I was there, and this is and oh. so forth, yeah. That was, it was good. Were you generally respected as a woman in uniform? Yes. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have asked me that. And I'll tell you, I had to take a paper into our, um, our, turn, our adjutant general's office at one time. And the man who was there, we started talking and I gave him a report and so forth. And he turned to me and he said, how do you expect to be treated? <laughs> and uh, you know, as as a woman in the in the services, and without thinking, I said, during working hours, I want to be treated as another soldier. During my my uh, free time, I want to be treated as a woman. And um, that now I was sort of glad, even though I didn't give it any thought. I thought that maybe that was quite right. <clears throat> and and um, and I found that I had I had no prejudice. Um, that I can recall. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I was too dumb to recognize it. But I, I was given a lot of responsibilities that nobody else had been given before. Of course, there weren't any wax before. But, I mean, even though there were other wax, I, I was given responsibilities and I went up the ladder and um, I, just, I, I just cannot remember a really definite um, time. Except from a civilian. Um, I also did public relations mm -hmm. um, and went around and talked to different groups. And I was asked to talk to a group, a combined um, Kiwanis, 
Rotary, whatever the service clubs were in Miami. And um, I went and I, oh, the wives were invited. And so I went and I, you know, gave my little spiel and brought in a little humor here and there and <laughs> told them about hunting for dust bunnies that everybody thought it was, you know, such a glamorous job and so <laughs> forth. And um, afterwards, I found out that one woman was very, very upset that I did not take my hat off. You know how men go into a room and they take their hat off? Mm -hmm. And she was upset. In other words, she was relating me to men. I was not a woman, I was a, ma I mm -hmm. was, um, a man. And I, that's the only way I could figure it. Because I thought that was very, very interesting because there was a lot of resentment, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with the, for the wax at, uh, in coming in. A lot of people thought we were there to service the men. And uh, that, was, that got around, you know. And uh, um, of course it was <laughs> far, no farther from the truth as, as it could be. Okay. But um, it, um, I, I cannot remember when I really found any real prejudice. The people with whom I, there, there was something related to prejudice, but it wasn't really prejudice. I'll go back to you, just get back to you on that for a minute later. Okay. But um, just, um, just the fact that I did what I did, and my, my fellow wax did the same thing, as a matter of fact, the men eventually said they didn't know how they would have done it without us. That must have made you feel so good. Wonderful. Wonderful, yeah. That it was not in vain. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just, uh, uh, I was very happy there. I really was. And, uh, as I said before, I'm repeating myself, but I That's think okay. I grew just from those experiences. Mm -hmm. And um, was able to bring that to my marriage and my, my life afterwards. So you've never regretted it? Though. Never regretted it. Not for one minute. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now you said just now that you would get back to me on something. <laughs> I'm not going to let you forget it. About the, not really an instance of prejudice, but... Wait a minute, let me think. Oh, when I first, I don't think I want to do this for, for because... That's okay. Um, you can delete, can't you, from the... Would you like me to stop it? Yeah, stop okay. it and then see if you think... Because I can always restart it. Yeah. Sure. Um, let, me, let me make sure it's... Yeah. See? We don't even know it's here. No. <laughs> oh, what, another thing, um, I'm just reminiscing now. When I first went to Orlando... Reminisce away? I'm lucky. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I went, first got to Orlando, I was met at the, at the train. Yes, I don't think I flew. I think I was met at the train. Oh, remind me, fly, okay? okay. Um, I was met at the, at, by um, a staff car. Now, if you know anything about the service, nobody has a staff car except a major on up. Mm -hmm. I was a lowly third officer, second, second lieutenant, and I had my own staff car. And when I, we went through the gates, the poor man, the poor guard at the, at the base didn't know how to treat me, how, how to address <laughs> me. He said, yes, sir. No, you aren't a sir. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and, and poor man, I just felt so sorry for him. I said, just call me lieutenant. <laughs> and, and then he, you know, he let me through. But he was so flustered, he didn't know oh, what to do. Really? I, didn't, I had the car for a short time. And he did mm -hmm. not let me have it for all the time I was here. <laughs> but uh, it was very nice and generous of him to do that. Mm -hmm. And he was a, a really a nice man. And he and his wife were, lived on the base, and they sort of took me under their wing. Whenever he saw me, he said, how you doing? What can I do for you? Uh, if you need anything, don't forget, I'm here for you. So it was, it was really very nice. Yeah. He was very nice to me. But the staff car just threw me, <laughs> and as it threw everybody else. And as we drove down, everybody stopped short, you know, and looked and saw a woman in uniform in the staff car. They couldn't, they couldn't get over it. Mm -hmm. and they thought it was funny. Oh my goodness. Another thing along that line, not along that line, but I don't know why I thought of it. When I was at staff, at Man General Staff School, there were people from all over, uh, uh, pilots and, and air people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And there were a few men from Czechoslovakia. For some reason, we were sitting alphabetically, I guess, and a couple of them sat near me. And we became good friends. And these men had to 
have a certain number of hours every month of flying time, mm -hmm. which they have to take care of. Well, they asked me one time if I would like to go up with them. And, of course, I said yes. <laughs> and, anyway, we went up on this plane. They did, he did everything that you can imagine with that plane. He did loops. He did dives. He went up straight. He, he went, you know, in circles. You know, I don't know what, what you call it. Loop-de-loops? Loop what? Loop-de-loops? Yeah, loop-de-loops. Everything that he did. And I was, sure, I was scary. <laughs> but when, so the point of the whole thing is, though, that when I got down on the floor, on, on the ground, a group of the men met me with a bop in a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> the way they were sure that I would be, th I'd be throwing up, you know, mm -hmm. that I would be sick to my stomach. But I, de I was determined. I said, I'm, "Don't read it, read it. You can't get sick. You just can't do it. You can't do it." And I managed it. Oh. I was, I did not throw, but I was green. I'm sure I was green when I when I stepped off that plane. Well, that's hard not. But, to yeah. <laughs> but it, it was fun. It, it's a good thing to, to reminisce about. You prove know. those guys. Yes, I showed them what I want. Right. right. Yeah. Oh, now, is that the fly that you wanted yes, me to right. mention? Uh -huh. yeah. Well, now I have another question for you, yes. something that you've mentioned. You said that occasionally, once you hit Orlando, I believe it was, there was dating. That was one way to pass the time. Mm -hmm. Did you mostly date the officers? Antle. We okay. were not allowed to date the enlisted men. What about a civilian? Oh, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. But if you were going to date... Yeah, yeah, if I were dating, it would be, had to be an officer. And there was an officers' club there, and we would meet people mm -hmm. that way. And they had big, you know, they had dances and affairs. And and um, every Friday, every Saturday night, we'd go in in town to a big, huge place where everybody where there'd be a big orchestra and we'd dance. Dancing was very important in those days, mm -hmm. I think. Did you like to dance? Loved it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love dancing. Still do. And um, it just. Uh, I don't know. It just was it was great, mm -hmm. and I worked hard. I don't want anybody to think I played my oh, <laughs> played no, my no. way through to the three years. I, I did work hard, but I enjoyed my work, mm -hmm. and so it made it go faster. Now, was that a standard enlistment time, three years, or did no, you? No, no. Uh, the four was over. I felt I had accomplished what I had set out to do. It was time to go home. Did they give you a, a minimal amount of time you were going to be in no. when you joined? No. no. Well, I think, I think we had once we were there, we were there for the duration. Okay. I I never thought of that. Um, I everybody did, and mm -hmm. and what we were discharged, it was according to time, okay. time served, and um, I was, um, yeah, I, I was I was out in in um, December, left there in in October, but was discharged in mm -hmm. December. Now, did you, and forgive me, I yes, don't know a lot right. about the wax. Did you go in right when the wax were getting started? Or? Yeah, I was in the sixth, I was in the eighth class. The eighth class. Yes. Okay. They had dozens and dozens of classes. And that, you said it was auxiliary then? Yes, right. it was WAAC, Women's Auxiliary Army Corps. Mm -hmm. And so we were still auxiliary. And, but then, I can't tell you exactly when, it, it evolved. Mm -hmm. Then we became WAC, Women's Army Corps. Then after that, we were, were took on the service that we were working in. So I became Rita, Isha, no, Rita Eisenberg, Captain Air Force. That's the way everything mm -hmm. was signed and everything I see. Well, those are some great stories. Can you think of anything else? Oh, let me think. <laughs> I know, I'm putting you on the screen. No, that's all right. I, I should remember more things. Um, this is very interesting, I think, because it, it's, um, it, it's relative to the time. Mm -hmm. um, I told you about my friend Coca, mm -hmm. and we were taken off the base. There wasn't room for everybody. So Coco and I had an apartment in, in Orlando. And she had a car, fortunately. <laughs> and we had, had to go to a place and have our clothes washed. And we found this woman, black, mm -hmm. to whom we took our clothes. And so I went with Coca, and we went into the woman's house, and I called her Mrs. whatever her name was. I didn't know her, and so forth. And 
when we came out, Kuka reamed me up and down my spine. I didn't, we didn't treat, call black women by their name, by the married name. We called them by their first name. So, which of course led to a lot of conversation between the two of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, she came from a very wealthy family. Her father was the um, uh, kingmaker of the state of Florida. Whoever he decided was going to be uh, president or, or senator or anything else, mm -hmm. he, he was the one. He was the um, um, publisher of the Tampa Times or whatever the name mm -hmm. of the newspaper was. And um, so anyway, she had a lot of blacks working for her. That's my point. That's the reason mm -hmm. I brought that up. And she, I said, but they are your equal. She says, we treated them well. We fed them, we clothed them, we sent them to the doctor when they, you know, this was in 43, mind you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we uh, um, took them all and, and uh, she said, and we give them better treatment than most people do. I said, but they're free. Why, and, and they're, they're, they're not below us, they are our equals. Why can't we call them by their first name? No, mm -hmm. couldn't do and so this, this, I thought, was very indicative of the times in the southern states. Mm -hmm. And um, I also had another one come to think of it. <laughs> Coco, wanted, Coco and I were going to, wanted to go to a resort that she knew about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stopped and I said, Coco, I think you ought to find out whether I will be welcome at this place. I am Jewish. I'm not sure that I will be welcome. She was got very indignant and said, of course you're welcome, you're with me, and, and that's fine. I said, do me a favor, before you and I are both embarrassed, call them and ask them, or give, me my, give them my name, because my name, Eisenberg, was very, you know, they could tell I was Jewish. And um, she came back, chagrined. She said, you were not welcome, would not have been welcome. They would not have accepted you there. Now those are the things that we were fighting for, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Some of the things, the black and us prejudice mm -hmm. throughout the world. And um, it, uh, it was very interesting to me that this, this happened. Mm -hmm. But I knew it was going to happen as far as the, as far as the, uh, the resort was concerned. Mm -hmm. I just knew it. So really, you, you seem to have encountered a little bit of the prejudicial side in the civilian. In the civilian, but, but not never, in, never in the end. No. no. Oh, wow. I thought that was interesting. And I was the only, I mean, the, talking about prejudice as far as my religion is concerned, the fact that they sent me as the, their emissary to the new base, I thought showed mm -hmm. no, no prejudice whatsoever. No. And a lot of the things that I did. There was no prejudice involved. I climbed the ladder pretty quickly, and and um, uh, I just uh, I really feel that there was not any prejudice as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, as I, I repeat, maybe I didn't see it, I didn't recognize it, mm -hmm. but it was never overt. Mm -hmm. The same as uh, as we saw. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. oh wow! Yeah. Amazing stories. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anything else? I know, I'm putting you on the no, spot. No, you are. Let me think what else I can tell <laughs> Is there anything else about um, something that happened after you came home from the war? Anything that you remember? Yes, I, when I out? told you, there was prejudice against women. Mm -hmm. uh, when because I went to get a job, they wouldn't, they, I, they wouldn't even look at my resume. I said, I was in the service too. And they said, it doesn't matter, we have to save them for the men. All the jobs. The, I thought I would do well in personnel. You know, I just trying to figure out what I could do, and I didn't want to go back to teaching. I knew that. No. 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 I I uh, preferred to go out in the other world, <laughs> and <clears throat> I just uh, um, was very very upset and chagrined and everything else. But it worked out just as well anyway because my father dying, and then I got married a month mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, it uh, I couldn't, and I moved here to to Elmira, so <laughs> that took care of that. Mm -hmm. But um, I just, you, here's a funny one. No, I don't know this one I want to tell. Are you sure? I, no, it was, um, <clears throat> I told you when I was going with the 
with the rabbi, mm -hmm. uh, the chaplain, and he had a lot of people who, for whom he was. Um, oh, remind me, I have another one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> say, say, any key words? Mom and Papa. Okay. And um, um, they, uh, a lot of people were interested in him and sought him out, you know, and so forth, because he was one of the few religious leaders, you know, around in the community. And um, a, a woman who was a refugee um, had welcomed David in and had him there a lot. And he, used, he took me a couple of times. And she resented me like you would never <laughs> believe. She oh, resented wow. me the fact that I was in the service and that I was another woman. And that she, he should, I mean, she was married. Mm -hmm. And she felt that she had dibs on him. <laughs> so it was funny. It was funny the way different people react. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, Mom uh, and Papa. Yeah, Mom and Papa. There was a young a couple uh, who owned a store. I went into a store in downtown Orlando. Mm -hmm. And I talked to this woman and her husband. And they were, you know, they recognized the, what, the uniform, and so they were concerned. And they asked me my name and, and uh, all that sort of thing. And we became very, very friendly. And um, all, I, uh, all I had to do was call them up and call up their woman who was their housekeeper because she was, she was never home. And I say, set, set another place at the table, I'm coming in. Oh. And, I, and if I felt like staying over, I could stay over. They were my parents while I was in Orlando. They were wonderful to me. And then after I was married, we went down to see them. I wanted them to meet Jess. And we went down to see them, and they were thrilled with him. And he was thrilled with them. But they were such sweet people. And then they died shortly after that. Mm -hmm. So they Both were an them. older couple. Yes, they were much older. Yeah. I mean, that's why I used to call Mom and Papa. You know? And uh, they were good to me. Really nice, very sweet. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, and I thought of this when you mentioned that you and your husband had the women's wear store. Yes. And it was in Elmira. Yes. Where was it at in Elmira? Sport Tots. Does that mean anything to you? What? Sport Tots. We were down on, on uh, Main <laughs> Street, right around the corner from, you know where Comer Center is? Yes. Right down the street, down Water Street there. We had, okay. and then we had a small chain. We had, uh, <clears throat> we had um, a lot of things. We had store in Binghamton. We had a sportswear store in Binghamton. We had a sportswear store in Rochester and in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. And then my husband was originally in the millinery business. So he had a lot of stores that we called, um, oh dear, I'll think of it in a minute. And um, so he had those stores. And then we opened up a discount store in, in um, called um, Red Tag. Okay. And um, we, we ran that for a while, you yeah. know. And so, and our son went into the business with us, which I resent, I regretted, really. I really. He was ready to go and take his, his law boards, and um, he decided he wanted to go in the business, and I was very upset. I wanted him to, but he enjoyed it, so that was fun. And he did a good job. How long did you have your business with your husband? Oh, Jess was in business in, since 36, I think, until we went out of business Dear, I can't remember. <laughs> um, I think we went out on a business 74, 75 around in here. So, that's good. Mm -hmm. so you had a nice long yes. run mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. oh. I love going into New York. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, we always went in and we always made sure that we saw a show or mm -hmm. went out to have mm -hmm. a nice Would dinner. Would you and your husband go together? Sometimes. Sometimes I went by myself. Mm -hmm. And mostly you did your buying in New York, or did yes. you go to any other cities? Rarely. We, we, we did most of our buying in New York. Few people came to us, but I don't like to buy that way because I don't see what's in the market. You see what my choices are. What better place to see yeah. it than New York? Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I, we did do most of it. Every once in a while we go someplace, but not, not really mm -hmm. often. And this is... This doesn't have a lot to do with your veteran experience, but it's something that just popped into my head. Mm. Did you ever get a chance to go to Poland and see where your parents no, were from? Unfortunately, no, unfortunately, I couldn't. My mother and my sister went one year, and uh, my husband um, had um, some problems. He had spinal meningitis and a brain abscess shortly after we were married, so I, w I, didn't, I couldn't leave him. 
and uh, he did very well. He recuperated totally, which was unheard of. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and um, and so I just uh, didn't, you know, I, I just couldn't go. I wanted to go badly, and so did my husband. We never got to it. Yeah. But you had this. Did your parents tell you stories? Oh yes, you know the stories were great, oh, and nice. and sad, mm -hmm. and. Um, but I, one of the other reasons I think that, that, I, <coughs> that I wanted to go into the services, my father had a big family left in Poland, and they were all in the, um, you know, in that area that they walled off, you know, and, and it was only Jewish. Mm -hmm. uh, place. And um, my father would send money and some clothing every single month of his life just in case one of his sisters could get it. He knew darn well that, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't get it. But he felt just on the outside chance that he might, that they might get it. He sent money and, and clothing for them to keep them warm. And I felt that that was pretty good, pretty great. Mm -hmm. you know. And there was another reason I felt I should go in. Mm -hmm. Were you in contact with any of your father's family after the war? Yes, um, not after the war. No, I had, I had there was um, one aunt with whom, um, one sister mm -hmm. with whom I was very, very close, and a lot of cousins in New York, mm -hmm. and with whom I was quite close. But whenever I went to New York, I would um, before my marriage, I would stay with Aunt Min when I was single, mm -hmm. and I go into New York, I stay with Aunt Min and Uncle Sam, yeah, Aww. and they were wonderful to me, but. Um, they're the only ones that survived. Uh, not many of them. I think there were three of them who came over. Mm -hmm. And um, um, that was that was good. But my father and, and my, my aunt were very, very close. Yeah. And she used to come up. We used to get a kick out of it. She lived in New York, you know. Mm -hmm. but, and whenever she came to visit us in Binghamton, she said she was going to the country. <laughs> always tickled me. That <laughs> pleased me so much. Um, it got such a kick out of that. And yet around here, Binghamton is the big city. Yeah, so. right. Mm -hmm. But they were going to the, anything according to New York, you know, was, was the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, funny. Oh, it's wonderful. But, um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to think. Um, there were so many things that happened, really, when you get right down to it, but a lot of them were personal. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was just, um, I don't know, I just, I wish I could think of some more now. I have them all in my notes. <laughs> I didn't well, look at my notes. If you'd like me to, I can switch tapes if you do want a minute to think about it. No, I don't think so. I think, I think, think I'm, I think, have I satisfied you? Have I, have I? I could listen for hours, <laughs> so that's my question to ask. Yeah. But no, I've enjoyed this. This has been wonderful. So, all I can tell you in the, in the, in the, uh, Summing up this whole thing, I think the wax made themselves a really important place in society and in the army, and I feel that um, it was a wonderful organization. It was the forerunner. Now look at what the women can do now. They are in with the men, except of course in, in you know battle. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I I'm glad that I was part of that. Mm -hmm. I opened doors. We we opened doors for women all over the country. And speaking as a modern-day woman, I'm very thankful to you for that. My thank you. No, because it's true. true. Yeah, it is you true. You did open a lot of doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that was one of the most gratifying things for me. Mm -hmm. And, of course, my kids used to kid me and say, Mom, you must have been one of the original woman's livers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did find for things, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That you obviously felt very strongly about. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rita. You this are most wonderful. welcome. I'm glad. Yes. And so this will be the end of the tape. Well, that's good. And we will stop it.